Herbert West needed fresh bodies because his life work was the reanimation of the dead. This work was not known to the fashionable clientele who had so swiftly built up his fame after his arrival in Boston, but it was only too well known to me, who had been his closest friend and sole assistant since the old days in Miskatonic University Medical School at Arkham. It was in those college days that he had begun his terrible experiments, first on small animals and then on human bodies shockingly obtained. There was a solution which he injected into the veins of dead things, and if they were fresh enough, they responded in strange ways. He had had much trouble in discovering the proper formula, for each type of organism was found to need a stimulus especially adapted to it. Terror stalked him when he reflected on his partial failures. Nameless things resulting from imperfect solutions or from bodies insufficiently fresh. A certain number of these failures had remained alive. One was in an asylum while others had vanished. And as he thought of conceivable yet virtually impossible eventualities, he often shivered beneath his usual stolidity. West had soon learned that absolute freshness was the prime requisite for useful specimens and had accordingly resorted to frightful and unnatural expedients in body snatching. In college and during our early practice together in the factory town of Bolton, my attitude toward him had been largely one of fascinated admiration. But as his boldness and methods grew, I began to develop a gnawing fear. I did not like the way he looked at healthy living bodies. And then there came a nightmarish session in the cellar laboratory when I learned that a certain specimen had been a living body when he secured it. That was the first time he had ever been able to revive the quality of rational thought in a corpse, and his success, obtained at such a loathsome cost, had completely hardened him. Of his methods in the intervening five years, I dare not speak. I was held to him by sheer force of fear and witnessed sights that no human tongue could repeat. Gradually, I came to find Herbert West himself more horrible than anything he did. And that was when it dawned on me that his once normal scientific zeal for prolonging life had suddenly degenerated into a mere morbid and ghoulish curiosity and secret sense of carnal picturesqueness. His interest became a hellish and perverse addiction to the repellently and fiendishly abnormal. He gloated calmly over artificial monstrosities, which would make most healthy men drop dead from fright and disgust. He became, behind his pallid intellectuality, a fastidious Baudelaire of physical experiment, a languid Elagabalus of the tombs. Dangers he met unflinchingly, crimes he committed unmoved. That, my friends, is from Herbert West, Reanimator. Today's Mythos Monday for today. Yes, my friends, and welcome to Stately Von Manor. Today, we are talking about Herbert West, Reanimator, one of H.P. Lovecraft's most grisly and ghoulish stories. Uh, this was an early story for H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, kind of an interesting one. Uh, I'll read you what S.T. Joshi has to say, a famed Lovecraft scholar S.T. Joshi. This episodic story, which gained notoriety as a result of Stuart Gordon's adaptation of it, H.P. Lovecraft's Reanimator, 1985, was commissioned by George Julian Houtain for his crudely sensationalist magazine, Home Brew, where it was serialized in the issues of February to July 1922. You can't make them too morbid, Houtain told Lovecraft. Each segment had to have a punch at the end. Lovecraft considered the whole exercise manifestly inartistic, but 
Hutain offered $5 a segment, so Lovecraft complied. There is no question that the story increasingly becomes a self-parody as it progresses. I would definitely agree with that. Um, so yeah, this is a story that H.P. Lovecraft wrote for this crappy little magazine uh, called Homebrew. And uh, a section of this story was printed uh, each month. And at the beginning of each sec section, it had to recap whatever happened in the previous section, which was lame. And Lovecraft knew it was lame and didn't like doing it. But, you know, he, he wanted to get that five bucks. Uh, so he did it. I think this is one of the things that soured Lovecraft on the whole work for hire thing. Um, his, his later stories, if editors didn't like it, he just didn't let them print the story. Uh, he didn't change things because editors said, hey, change this. Um, and I think this was part of that, this story. This is one of those stories he was embarrassed by later on in his career, which is understandable. Uh, it does become a self-parody as it goes along. One of the things that uh, a lot of people don't realize about Lovecraft is that this guy had a sense of humor, and you see a lot of his sense of humor in this story. Uh, it it becomes, as it goes along, more and more funny, and more and more over the top and just outlandish until when you get to the end of the story, towards the end, you literally have Herbert West walking around in his laboratory ankle deep in blood and gore. I mean, it's just, it just flies over the top by the end of it, uh, where he's like reanimating parts of human bodies just to see if he can do it. Um, and he goes and works uh, in a field hospital in the First World War just so he can get a bunch of mangled bodies to work with. Uh, it's interesting, this story. Uh, and uh, if you haven't seen the film adaptation of it, oh man, <laughs> see that movie. Uh, I, I love horror movies, and that's, that was a good one. Uh, be sure to see the unedited extra pervy version if you watch that movie. That's my recommendation to you. Uh, there are a couple things that are really good about this story. There's a couple things that aren't so good about it. Uh, one was the recaps that it has to have before each section. Uh, the other is that this was an early story. This was 1922. Uh, and at this point in his career, more of Lovecraft's racism kind of slips through than does later on in his career. Uh, you don't see much of that kind of thing after he gets back from New York, from his New York experience, and then he starts writing his really, really good stuff. But in these old stories, you'll see some of that. And you'll see some of that in this story, and it's both uh, kind of awful and stupid at the same time. But it's there. What do you do? It's there. Um, one of the couple of the good things about this story, the first of all, the character of Herbert West is uh, fantastic. Just this coldly rational man uh, with a youthful look and just, but behind his face is just a brain that is just purely interested in science, no matter how horrible the things he has to do to, to accomplish his experiments. And then eventually he becomes completely hardened and becomes kind of a pervo guy who's just getting his kicks off doing what he's doing. Um, that It's a great character. Uh, Jeffrey Combs uh, portrayed this character perfectly in the film, by the way. You should watch that movie just for that. And uh, that's one of the things. It has a great sense of place. Uh, it has a kind of a ghoulish atmosphere over the whole thing. Uh, it is an over-the-top and kind of funny story. Uh, in the last section, a bunch of zombies make a delivery to Herbert West. and They bring in this big box, and one of the zombies is like, Express. Prepaid. It's just... There are, there are some funny moments in this. Um, and yeah, by the end of this, you see that Lovecraft's just... He's just, he's just playing it for all it's worth and just having a good time with the whole thing. Uh, so ghoulish fun is what Reanimator is. Uh, it's, it's kind of interesting, you know, this story, like the Penguin Classics edition of the first Penguin Classics edition of his stories had this story in there. 
And I think, you know, if you're not familiar with Lovecraft and you come to this thing, you gotta be like, what the hell is this? Um, why is it written this way? Why is it, why is it like this? What is this thing? Uh, but if you know the story behind it, you kind of get why it was written the way it was. Uh, not sure I would have I would put Reanimator in a collection of Lovecraft's best stories, but I guess the people of Penguin just really dig this story. Um, probably because of its fame from the film, I'm imagining. Uh, from films, they made multiple Reanimator films. Uh, yeah, so Reanimator, an interesting, interesting H.P. Lovecraft story, a kind of early experimental type of story. He did do one more story uh, for Homebrew. Uh, I believe it was The Lurking Fear, which I'll talk about one of these days. Uh, the more I get into this volume, the more I want to talk about these stories. So we'll be here a while on Mythos Monday. So be sure to catch me next time when we talk about another horrifying story. And uh, tomorrow is Tag Tuesday, so catch me tomorrow for that. Okay, guys, thanks for stopping by Stately Vaughn Manor once again. I will catch you next time. Bye, guys.